Hello, I'm Sophie from the National Space Academy and in this video I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Now this is what we call a spectroscope. It's a box, it's got a CD in, it's got a hole for you to look through, it's got a hole for light to pass through and what this will let you do is look at a source of light and split it into its individual colours. So effectively, you're going to be making a rainbow in a box. Now I'm going to show you how to make this first of all, and then I'm going to explain to you how scientists and astronomers can use bigger, more technological versions of this to identify stars, gases in space, gases coming off comets, and basically how we can use the light that we see from these objects to fingerprint them in space. To make your spectroscope, you will need a chopping board or something that you can cut on, a copy of the template, you can print this off using the PDF provided, some sellotape, scissors, a craft knife or pen knife, and an old CD. On the printout for the box, you'll see that there are straight lines, solid lines, and there are dotted lines. What we want to do is we want to cut along the solid lines and then we'll be folding along the dotted lines. So we cut across the solid, fold along the dotted. Now, if you have not been able to print this onto card, you might want to stick it to an extra piece of paper or two before you start cutting, just because that will give your box a little bit more strength and it won't let as much light through, which will make it a lot easier for you to see the spectra. Once you have cut along the solid lines, we now need to fold along the dotted lines and we want to keep folding along each dotted line until we are ready to make our box. I'm not going to show the whole thing because that is going to take a while, but you get the idea. And once you've done all of your folding, you have got the net to build your box. Now, before we make the box, we need to use our pen knife or craft knife, so you'll want to get an adult to help you, to cut out the square, which is going to be our viewing hole. And you also need to cut out the little strip above that. So we have the square to look into, the thinner box we're cutting out, that's going to be the slit that the light can come through. And then the solid line that's drawn in the middle, we need to score all the way along that and through because that's what we're going to put the CD through. Now we're ready to fold our box together and this is easier with another person helping you. But we want to fold all of the tabs in and tuck them in to each other so that we end up with a nice rigid box that we can then tape together. Now I find it's easier to tape a few little bits to the sides first and once you've got it mainly secured you can go around with a bit more tape until you've got a nice sturdy box that isn't going to let too much light in apart from the light that we want. Just make sure you don't seal over any of the holes that you've cut out or the slit. And now we're nearly there, we just need to take our CD, pop it through the slot, making sure that the shiny side is facing up towards where our viewing hole is going to be. So now that you've made your box, and hopefully it looks something like this, we need to look at a light source. So I'm going to use the lights that are up there in my ceiling. Now it takes a while for your eye to get used to doing this, some people might see the rainbow straight away. But the light coming from that light source is white light. Now what this means is that actually it's not white, it's a mixture of all the different colours of light. You might see in the sky after a particularly heavy rainstorm, you can see a rainbow. And that's because the light coming to us from the sun is getting split into its different colours. So in order to see that, our CD is going to act as what we call a diffraction surface, but basically it can split those lights 
into those different colours. You can see as I move this around, hopefully you're able to see a kind of rainbow effect on there. Now making sure that your CD is put into your spectroscope so that the shiny surface is facing upwards towards the hole and so that the bottom of the CD is right here in this corner. What you then need to do is aim the small slit at the top at your light source and put your eye to the square here and you want to try and look straight down onto the surface of the CD. So it's going to look something like this. And then you carefully tip it up until you get that light coming through and right about there I'm getting a nice rainbow on the surface of my CD and because it's in a box I can see it really really clearly. Now of course the science word for rainbow is a spectrum and that means that it's showing all of the possible wavelengths of light, all the different colours. And if you point the slit of your spectroscope towards a nice white light source, something like a, a white LED light bulb, or even on a sunny day you can go outside, what you'll see is a rainbow, a spectra. Now it doesn't photograph well, it looks much better with the naked eye. And if you have one of these energy saving light bulbs in your house, then you get to see something really quite interesting. Again, it's not going to be the best view in the world because this is coming from my phone camera through the eye hole. But you can see that we end up getting our rainbow but bits of it are much, much brighter than others. We have lines at particular colours, particular wavelengths that are brighter. Now, when atoms get excited, when they uh, get given energy, then they can lose that energy in the form of light. But the key thing is that every different atom, every different element, every different gas will only give off light of specific colours or wavelengths. And so that means that we can use the lines of light, those emission lines, to identify what is in stars. And in a similar way, the light from distant stars can excite or give energy to the atoms in gases in space. So by looking, this time not for the bright lines, but for the dark lines that show where particular colours of light were absorbed, we can identify the elements in that gas.